I'm Jenny Robertson, founder of the On Purpose Woman Global Community and founder and publisher of On Purpose Woman Magazine. I'm here with Cheryl Seavey to talk about her article in the March-April issue of On Purpose Woman Magazine. Cheryl, thanks for being with me today. Thanks. It's great to see you again, Jenny. I know it's been way too long. Way too it long. has. It has. Before we jump into this really lovely topic, uh, tell our viewers a little bit about you. Well, I'm here in California, Northern California, and I retired about 10 years ago and have been researching and writing on women's issues and basically midlife, life after 50, and, you know, kind of what it, what it means to live a vital second half of life. Mm -hmm. And one of those biggest things is friendship and community. So that was kind of how this article came about. Well, and, found, oh, go ahead. No, that's all right. Go ahead. Yeah, I found out about this article because you sent out your blog to your email list. I'm on it. I read it and I loved it so much that I emailed you and said, can I use this in the magazine? And the title is, how far will you drive for a good conversation with a friend? And you tell a story about meeting a friend for lunch. Please share some of that story with us. Well, I've known Anne for probably about 15 to 20 years. She used to live out here on the West Coast and she moved back East and now she lives in Chicago. I probably haven't seen her for about maybe five years, but we keep in touch sporadically and our lives have taken different directions and she's running a business in Chicago. And But she had mentioned that she was coming out here to a conference in Monterey, which is about an hour and a half from here and asked if I wanted to get together for lunch or for get together. She didn't even have time for lunch, but this brief little two hour blip. And it was the middle of a California winter, which means rain and wind, no snow. So um, I drove down there and met with her um, for a couple of hours one afternoon. And uh, and it was just the, the funny thing is, and you know this with friends, is that it feels like no time has passed when you've seen a long friend, long time friend. And we just picked up right where we left off. We caught up on issues that we're dealing with, um, personal, pr professional, writing. Um, there was tears, a lot of laughter. And uh, and then she went off to her meetings and I drove back home. So you drove an hour and a half, half each way in yeah. rain and wind and all that kind of stuff. A typical yeah. California winter, I guess it sounds like. Yeah, right? yeah. And which, which, I mean, when, when you're talking to some of my, you know, your East Coast um uh, community. It sounds kind of wimpy, but uh, California is just not used to it in this part. And really, you know, we're not that used to it either here in Maryland. Sometimes it looks like the way people drive. So not everybody's comfortable driving in that. So no. And, you know, you said that a lot of people won't, you wrote, uh, many people won't even drive half an hour to have lunch with a friend. Yeah. And you had some ideas about that. What do you, what do you think that might be? Well, I think that COVID did, I, I think it really had an impact on people in a lot of different ways. Um, I've seen friends of mine that are now very reluctant to drive, um, to be in a group setting, to be in a restaurant, to be indoors, um, you know, regardless of, you know, that's just their own, I think there's a lot of PTSD surrounding that period of time. And we got out of the habit. Um, people got, I think, a little bit more um, used to, and in some cases, kind of addicted to social media. Um, Zoom has become very popular, and people think that, you know, some people believe that gee, if we just have a phone call once in a while or a Zoom call, that, that that is a good substitute. And in my opinion, it's not. Um, it serves its purpose. I mean, I'm not denying that it's not a valuable tool. But on the other hand, um, being with people face-to-face, -face, body language, conversation, the spontaneity of, of, a, of an in-person connection is just invaluable. Would you, lay, if you're going to label yourself introvert, extrovert, do you know, where do you fall along that? Are you a little of both? I mean... Well, I what used to say I was like an, an, an extrovert and people, well, most of my friends would all say I'm an extrovert, but I do need a, a fair amount of time by myself. And I even find that even people that are introverted do need to be out with people, you know, now and again, or we tend to kind of stew in our own juices. <laughs> and, uh, and so I think that COVID and just this time in my life, I've become more, more balanced in terms of wanting to be with people yet needing to refresh my spirit um, by myself. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you that because I, Myers-Briggs years ago, extrovert, ENFP, yeah. And I, I'm an extrovert because extroverts are, you know, we get out there and we do speeches and right. of people and because I, I misunderstood the whole, I think a lot of people did the whole yes. extroversion, extroversion thing. And so I did it again. And I realized that 
I was answering the questions based on my behavior, not on my desires. Mm -hmm. And my desires are, I am an, an introvert who straddles the line. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I think I saw somebody named it um, an extroverted introvert, maybe something mm -hmm. like that, or mm -hmm. a socialized introvert, which I don't yeah. like that because that, that implies people aren't if they're not, right? But I think for me, COVID just, I went, oh, goody. Yes. Um, I was doing eight meetings a month locally here in Maryland, you know, the drive time, the beat. And I loved, oh, you know how much I love my community. I mean, 24 yes. years, I must love it. Right. Yes. Right. And all of a sudden my husband and I had this time together and I had this time, I bought a chase lounge for my office <laughs> and I was just spending all this reflection time. Yes. And, you know, and I didn't, and I, I don't, I didn't talk about that much because there were a lot of people suffering mm -hmm. deeply during COVID. And I felt almost guilty that I wasn't, you know, for me, it was like a, a really a renewal for me. Almost. Yes. And so I can kind of understand that piece of not getting back out. Right. So I didn't, I, I have one in-person meeting now, and I didn't start that until January of last year because nobody mm -hmm. was asking for it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I'll be, fine. I'll be fine if I never see people in person again. Right. And, and I bring that up because it's not true. It's not true. I didn't realize what I was missing until I had it back. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and I think we need the balance. And, yes. you know, and, and, and the extroversion, introversion is where do you go to get your energy? And I think that COVID, you know, it was a big pause. It gave mm -hmm. us a chance not to say yes. Um, you know, when, when our kind of our, our, my default was always sure. Yeah, I'll do that. And, and it wasn't always, I wasn't always conscious about what I was saying yes to. Yeah. And, and yeah. so now, you know, I'm much more mindful of that. And so when, you know, like when Anne, you know, um, emailed me and said, Hey, I'm going to be in town. You want to get together? Um, you know, I thought about it for a few minutes because there's, you know, there's the, the factor of the time, but then I immediately, that was worth the time. And I think it's the difference between ex expensive, you know, expenses time is an expense or time is an investment. Mm. And if we don't make the investment in our friendships, they will languish. Yeah, they will. You know, they really will. And, and that time was so worthwhile for both of us. And, you know, we talked about my mom passed away a few years ago and her mom's, you know, um, not doing well at this stage in her life. And, and it's just, a, you know, um, everybody's going through something and you don't share those hugs in those moments when you're necessarily on a, on a call. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. I have a really good friend who um, we'd gotten into the habit of going to lunch after a meeting that I had actually it was at this country club that she belonged to. So we met there. We'd always go have lunch after. And then when COVID hit, you know, we didn't meet anywhere. And I think it took us two or three months to actually even think about doing anything on yeah. Zoom. And that was sporadic. Right. And we finally started back again, I guess it was year before last, you know, when, when everything was seen to be, um, you know, opening up some, because Maryland, you know, Maryland was like the, one of the very first states to shut down. And we were also not one of the early states to open back mm -hmm. up. Our governor was very, very um, conscious about a lot mm -hmm. of things. And so, you know, now we're like, oh yeah, it's been a month when we get together again, you know, because yeah. it's been so wonderful because it's just, yeah. And so I, so I think that's why your story resonated with me so much, because it's a great reminder that, there are people we want to spend time with. And yeah. sometimes we also have to be the ones to make the move. Right. Well, I, you know, it's, it's a, a friend of mine says, you know, there are hosts and there, there are wonderful hosts and there are wonderful guests, but, but sometimes the wonderful guests do not like to host. Mm -hmm. And I think the same is true with initiation. You know, there's some people that are natural initiators and make things happen. You're clearly one of those people. And then there's those that will attend and like to participate, but they're not one to initiate. Yeah. And and I had to get past that to where and not take it personally that gee, that's their style. And uh, you know, and they show, you know, they show appreciation or um uh, you know, um joy in the moment if you know, mm -hmm. if, if it's something that they like to do. So that's that that's gotta be okay. I like that perspective. This has happened to me way more than once where I will reach out to someone that I know, sometimes it's through Zoom, but even before that, somebody who just maybe came to a meeting in person, but I didn't really get to know them, but I'm getting a sense of them on social media and they're interesting. And I might reach out and say, I'd love to have lunch with you sometime. Mm -hmm. And and she's come back and said, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to ask you, but I know how busy you are. Yeah. 
And it's like, don't let that stop you because yes. if somebody's busy, they'll tell you. If, right. they, if you have to wait a month, get it on the calendar, right? Right, right. Exactly. Otherwise, it never happens. It never happens. Well, you know, and, and I think particularly as, as life has changed, you know, whether it's COVID or, you know, midlife or retirement or emptiness, our communities change. Mm -hmm. And I found that when I retired, you know, I mean, I, I chose to leave my career, but I didn't realize at the same time I was leaving all my my professional women's networking groups, my, my consulting practice groups, um, to say nothing of my clients. And I lost these communities um, because I no longer had anything in common with them. It's not, I mean, it's nothing personal, but I just didn't have anything mm -hmm. in common with them. So you have to kind of reach out and find people and groups and communities that support you as who you are now. Mm -hmm. It's a great point. And sometimes when you don't have that, you create it for yourself, right? And you invite yes. people in. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, and like we have Nancy and I have our, our monthly hourglass lunches where it's just a group of women that we get together and have conversations. Mm, nice. Nice. Well, let's talk now about something that isn't quite so happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was the, you wrote the last year, that last year the Surgeon General described the loneliness epidemic. Would you talk about that some, please? Yeah, I think that after sometime, I, I want to say, I can't remember what it was. I think it was about a year and a half ago. So it was post-COVID. But the he wrote that the, the epidemic of suicides, depression, and loneliness is huge now. And, and it's, gotten, it's gotten more significant. And of all ages, at one time, we thought that it was senior citizens that were lonely, but they're finding that the younger generation, the the eighteen to thirty, I don't, I don't, I'm not quite clear on that. But it's the younger generation that's really struggling with loneliness, mm. and uh, and that causes all kinds of things. You know, um, the suicide rate is higher than ever for younger people, wow. and um, you know, and it, it it affects it affects your health, your well being. Um, you know, academically. Um, I mean, it just it's, it's having a very serious effect on our on our society. And I think as our communities become more fractured and polarized, um, it's it's really it's really taking its toll. So many people never did go back to work. Right. right. They're still working right. from home. And you know, I think I always thought that would be an amazing thing to work from home. I would love to have worked from home back in the day. But yet I think I would want, I would want to have controlled that. I would want to go yeah. in when I felt like going, you know, and right. some companies I know are coming, you know, come in one day a week or every two weeks for a group meeting or whatever. But that's the thing I hear most people say that they love that they can get the work done. They can get twice the amount of work done that they could do in the office, but they have no interaction that is yeah. not on Zoom and they yeah. really miss that. Yeah. And so it, it just makes sense. I mean, look at all these kids, the 18 year olds who missed a three year, what, three years of school, two years of school mm -hmm. and that interaction. And yes. so did, I haven't read that study, but let me tell those watching that Cheryl actually linked to the study in her articles. I need to go read that now. Did he have a solution or a suggestion for what we can do? Do I, I, I'm sure he probably did, but I don't, re I don't remember offhand what okay. it is. And what that does though, is that that certainly gives me pause that I should continue on, you know, on, on combating loneliness. And um, because I think it is, you know, it, it is, it is a real challenge. I mean, even kids aren't going back to school, you know, the, um, I don't know how it is back in Maryland, but in California, the, um, uh, the absentee rate is very high in school and I mean for all for all grade levels mm -hmm. not just you know not just you know your your truant teens if you will okay but Are parents um, keeping their children home do you think from fear of of them getting sick again or from I don't know other things yeah that's interesting yeah I don't know um and it's a problem that they're trying to address but um, not very successfully I'm, I'm thinking mm -hmm. and and you know and and I know several friends of mine that have young adult children that are, you know, in their late twenties, early thirties, and they're working three and four days at home. Well, heck, most of our social life was wrapped around when we were working, right? Yeah. And you after, know, you may go out after. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. Lunch and, you time, know, going to lunch with your friends. Yeah. yeah exactly. and, and the conversations that you have that are not meeting scheduled meeting related were oftentimes the most valuable conversations. Yeah. That's so true. So not only is, is this generation, you know, so tied to electronics 
and which kind of replaces that human contact sometimes they have right. other stuff dumped on them as well to kind of deal with so it makes for a, a really different situation that we haven't yeah. really dealt, haven't had to deal with before i guess yeah yeah and and i think that there's a sense that that, that this is called you know work life balance now i know my you know my son and daughter-in-law work out of their home, but they go into the office a couple of two, three days a week, depending. And they get a lot more done. They've got more flexibility with their with their kids. Um, and uh, and they've managed to, to find that balance mm-hmm. and still go into the office periodically and still have that social connection. Yeah, that seems like the ideal right there is, that, especially yeah. for people, parents with children that right. you, know, you get to parent the way you need to parent or you get, to, at least you're there if they get sick at school, you know, yeah. anything like that. Yeah. Just, a mother's worst, phone calls. <laughs> yeah, and mother's worst nightmare, you know, you're right in the middle of running a meeting and you get a call, you know, your kid's sick, you got to come home. And of course, our generation of women, Cheryl, that separated us from the men. That's exactly we, right. We were trying to play on this level playing field. What wasn't really a level playing field. We were trying to make it a level playing field. <laughs> but then all of a sudden we're relegated. We're a mom now, right? Exactly. Oh men, yeah. Men rarely got those calls. They just no. rarely didn't. They were like the fourth in line, I think. <laughs> you know, yeah, the, the, the grandmother, the aunt, the first the mother, then the grandmother and the aunt and everybody underneath yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And and then that's, you know, and that's one of the good things now is that, you know, my, my sons are very actively involved okay. in the rearing of their kids and they're most, just as likely to get a call as the mom. Yes. When I leave my house, like for something early in the morning and the kids are at the bus stop, I see often there are more fathers there than yeah. mothers, which is so cool. And it could be they're working from home, but great. Right. It, I mean, it's just, it's just really yes. cool to see. So I think, you know, there's good things behind all of these perceived kind of negative things too there are also some real gifts that have come out of some of this would you want to say anything else about why you love the in-person contact so much well I just I I think that I like the energy that's exchanged there's kind of a non-verbal energy that happens yeah um there's you know sometimes you know like when when it like for example when Ann and I were talking is that you know when she talked about her mom I just reached over and touched her hand and I said it's a tough time you don't do that in a phone call, you know, or in a text. And, um, you know, and then you've got kind of the, the ambiance of the coffee shop or, or the, you know, or the wine bar. And Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I like that. I like the ambiance as well as the, as the get together. And, um, you know, there's just something together and like, you know, just, yeah, it's, it's all those little things that I guess we took a lot for granted, didn't we? Yeah, it's just that just happens all the time. So thank you for this beautiful reminder of why it matters. And um, you ended your article with relationships tend to languish like plants without water when we Mm -hmm. do not nourish them with our actual presence. Oh, my gosh, that is so beautiful. Anything you want to add to that? No, other than if there's somebody that you're thinking about contacting to get together, do it now and uh, and don't wait. Because it's just so important. Read again to read Cheryl's article, go to my website, opwgc.com slash magazine. And that link is also in the text of this video. Cheryl, how can our viewers find out more about you and your work? Um, my website is CherylCV.com, C-H-E-R-R-Y-L-L-S-E-V-Y.com. I know there's far too many letters in that. <laughs> and I'm on Instagram, Cheryl24. And I'm on Facebook as well, Cheryl CV. Okay. So um, would love to add you to my mailing list and um, and send out the blogs and the research that I'm doing. And I think there's going to be one in the future on loneliness. Mm. Good. So that was a that was a good idea. Thanks, Jenny. So those um, all of those links for Cheryl are also in the text of this video. And Cheryl, I was going to ask you if there's anything coming up that you want us to know about. Well, I know you're writing a book, right? I am. I am. That is talking about languishing. <laughs> um, I've got the first draft. I'm in the revision of my first book. Um, What's next? Nine ways to live your best life after 50. And it does talk about community and the importance of friendship, as well as other key components in, in living your best life. And I want to compliment you on getting your book out. That was very inspiring and kind of kicked me into gear. Oh, so. thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Yes. And, you know, I want to leave um, by saying this. 
if I lived three or four hours from you, I would drive that far to see you because we are on opposite coasts that we've, we've never met in person. We've often talked about, wow, we know, wouldn't it be great if we could just get together? I would drive three hours each way to see you, Cheryl. Not well, twist. you know, if you get if you get on the right airplane, that'll happen. I and the follow up to my uh, my uh, my blog post, I got a couple of comments from some friends, and one friend she sent me a note and she said, "I just flew down for the day to L.A. You know, it's an hour flight mm -hmm. to have lunch with three of my college friends." And another friend of mine told me that her mother's best friend from grade school and her mother his mother's best friend is eighty seven drove two and a half hours outside of Chicago in the winter to see her best friend who was in hospice and wasn't doing well. So if this woman can do it at 87, we sure as heck can do it before we then. Sure can. We sure can. <laughs> well, Cheryl, thank you so much for your beautiful, thoughtful piece and for being here with me today. I Thanks. Thanks it. so much, Jenny. Thanks for the opportunity. You're welcome. And thank I you know. for watching the Real Women, Real Purpose talk show. For more information, on the On Purpose Woman Global Community and Magazine, please click on the links in this video and be sure to check out Cheryl's website for all that she offers. And for more interviews with amazing women living their lives on purpose, check out our YouTube channel. And that link is also in the text of this video. Thanks again for watching.